Um, chapter three deals with the steps we go through to conduct marketing research, the process we go through. So the 11 steps in the process that we'll look at here are an overview of the entire research process, of what tasks we have to consider and in what order. Um, the steps are gonna guide us through the remainder of the book, but we'll get an overview of them here in chapter three. So here's the uh, 11 steps. Uh, in, we can divide them into some phases. So the first phase is to figure out what we need to research, and that's steps one, two, and three. Step one is to establish the need for marketing research. Step two is to define the problem. And step three is to determine the research objectives. Then we get into the second phase where we design the mechanics of the research. Uh, that's where we have step four, determine the design. Step five, look for information sources. Step six, uh, determine our data collection methods. Step seven, uh, do questionnaire design. Uh, step eight, look at our sample size and our uh, sampling plan. Then we get into the third phase where we gather data from the respondents. And that's step nine, collect the data. And then finally, the fourth phase is to generate findings and interpret them. That is step 10, analyze the data, and step 11, write and present the report. So um, it's an 11 step process, but nothing is sacred about all 11 steps. Not all studies use every step, and projects may not follow uh, the steps in the order that are given here. This is just a guideline for what actually uh, normally needs to be done. So the first step is to establish uh, the need for marketing research. And if managers are trying to make uh, decisions but they don't have adequate information to make those decisions, that's a signal that we have a need for marketing research. The need for marketing research is affected by company policy. Um, conducting different types of studies on a continual uh, basis at specified intervals may already be happening in the company. Uh, certain types of studies uh, may be used whenever a particular situation occurs. This may be a company policy. Um, you may end up looking at marketing research being conducted on an as-needed basis. And management may also show preferences for certain types of marketing research, like focus groups, for example. <clears throat> so marketing research is not needed if the information is already available, if you have to make a rapid decision because marketing research can't be hurried, it's a, a, it's a time consuming process, uh, don't have the money to conduct marketing research, or you determine that the costs outweigh the advantages. So if the information is not available, then we can look at, can uh, the information be obtained from the uh, internal uh, report systems, the marketing intelligence system, or the decision support system? When the information is not available, the marketing researcher should uh, consider conducting marketing research. So the other uh, possibility is that the information is in another part of the company and that the various departments in the company are silos separated from each other and 
they rarely pass information along. Not necessarily a good situation. So another case where marketing research is not needed is when the timing is wrong. Um, often the uh, time managers decide they need marketing research um, and uh, time is critical. Uh, they need to respond to a competitor market condition. Um, so time may be a factor for products that are nearing the end of their uh, life cycle. Another case when marketing research uh, may not be advisable is when funds aren't available. Uh, research, if conducted properly, can be expensive. So conducting research is one cost, but to be useful, firms must also consider what it may cost to implement the research recommendations. And uh, uh, another instance where marketing research may not be needed is when the costs outweigh the value. Managers should always consider the cost of research and the value they expect to receive from conducting it. Although cost is readily estimated, it's more difficult to estimate the value that the research is likely to add. And so here we see a case where uh, if you can attract more uh, customer attention, that is value. Um, but it, how do you quantify that? So when will research have great value? Well, if it helps clarify problems, um, sometimes also the research can identify changes that are occurring in the marketplace, both with uh, consumers and competitors, it'll have great value then. Uh, sometimes research uh, can identify the best alternative to pursue, and that's uh, the purpose of it. So of course we want to look at it then. And it'll help your brand uh, maintain a competitive advantage. So after we finish step one and we've decided to do marketing research, then we have to define the problem. And this is the most important of the steps. Uh, the problem can be viewed as a statement of decision alternatives. And of course, if we don't have any alternatives, then no decision is necessary. And we can go back to, we don't need the uh, research. Then once we've defined uh, the problem, then we have to establish the research objectives. And this is how to obtain the information. Um, and this information is the information that's necessary to support the manager's business decision. So there's three different types of research, exploratory, descriptive, and causal. Uh, exploratory research is a form of informal research that is undertaken to learn more about the research problem, uh, learn the terms and definitions of the uh, problem domain, and to identify research opportunities. A descriptive research uh, describes the phenomenon of interest. Um, a marketing executive who wants to know what types of people buy the company's brand needs a study to describe the demographic profile of heavy users of the company brand. A causal research attempts to uncover what factors cause some event. Will a change in the packet size of, say, a, a detergent product cause a change in its sales? So step four, determine what type of research we're going to conduct. 
Uh, step five is identify information types and sources. Uh, researchers have to identify the type and sources they will use. Uh, primary information is information collected specifically for the problem at hand. And secondary information is information that has already been collected and may be available internally or externally. Uh, step six is determining the methods of accessing the data. And there's four main choices. Uh, have a person ask questions, uh, use computer-assisted questioning, uh, allow respondents to uh, answer questions themselves without assistance, and use a combination of the uh, three uh, choices already given. Uh, step seven is to design the data collection forms. And the questions uh, have to uh, generate answers that will uh, satisfy the research objectives and ultimately solve the problem. So the questionnaire has to be uh, worded to give those answers. And it must be, in order to do that, it has to be clear and it can't have a bias in the questioning that might lead someone to a certain type of answer. Uh, step eight is to determine the sample plan and size. Um, a population is the entire group that we're interested in, say the United States as a market. A sample is a subset. Sample plans uh, say how we draw the sample from the total population. And the size of the sample will determine the statistical accuracy of our results. <clears throat> uh, step nine is to collect the data. Uh, errors in uh, collecting data can be the result of intentional or unintentional uh, uh, issues from field workers or from respondents. So you have to have controls in place to minimize uh, the uh, potential errors you might get. Uh, step 10 is to analyze the data. And in chapter 10, we'll uh, learn how to uh, use Excel in uh, data analysis for marketing research. Uh, you'll learn uh, data analysis, including basic descriptive analysis to summarize your data. And that'll be in chapter 11. And then in chapter 12, we'll go into how to generalize values you generate from your sample data to the population and then test hypotheses. In chapter 13, we'll go in how to test for differences uh, between groups. And then in chapter 14, we'll look at uh, determining relationships among variables and use regression to predict uh, uh, relationships between uh, variables. Uh, step 11 is to prepare and present the final research report. So presenting the marketing research report is often the only record of the research project for the client. So it makes it very important. Uh, researchers write reports and typically make oral presentations both. Um, and the reports follow a fairly standard report, uh, report writing format. And that's illustrated in chapter 15. <clears throat> 